you know, I suspect that sometimes our students feel like we introduce things to them just to make their lives more complicated. Semilog paper is probably one of those cases. What's wrong with regular graph paper? Well, sometimes semilog is just the simpler way to go. Dealing with gel data is a perfect example of when to use semilog paper or when it is simplifying things. So in this case, what you want to do is find the migration distance of each of these bands in the molecular weight marker and then relate that migration distance to the size of the actual band. And so for example, for this molecular marker, we have this card here, which tells us the, the sizes of the standards. And we can then plot these sizes versus migration distance. Now, if you do this on regular paper, you will end up with a graph that looks like this which might look familiar to you, it's, it's a curve. Now, predicting things from a curve can be a little difficult, and so as a biologist, I would prefer to do this from a straight line. Now, to do this from a straight line, you would have to go and calculate the logarithm of each of these sizes and generate a graph that looks like this. That straightens out the curve and allows you to make some predictions about the size of a particular DNA fragment. So how do we get this straight line without having to go through the figuring out of logarithms and things? Well, we use semilog paper. So if we do use semilog paper, you get something that looks like this. And so you can see here, this is very similar to the previous graph. Again, it does the same thing, it essentially accomplishes the same thing. It straightens out the curve. The nice thing here with semilog paper is I did not have to calculate logarithms. It does it automatically for me. This is what I mean by making it simpler. So let's take a look at semilog paper. Semilog paper comes in different formats. We have semilog paper that looks like this. This is called one cycle. So basically it goes from one, which will be the lowest number here, and goes up to 10. That is one cycle of this semilog paper. Now you can also have two cycles. This doesn't look that much different maybe, but what you have here is again one down here, then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and this will be ten. That's one cycle, and then the second cycle would start from the ten, and then become twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty, ninety, and one hundred. And I think this is the part that gets most students confused. Basically, every time you go to a higher cycle, all the numbers go up by a factor of 10. So again, in the first cycle, we started at 1 and went up to 10. The second cycle, we start from 10 and go up to 100. Again, we can also have three cycles. So here are three cycles. And again, we would start at 1 down here, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, then 10. And then the second cycle would start with 10 and go up by 10. So this would be 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and then 100. And then the third cycle starts at 100 and goes up by hundreds. So this is 100, this is going to be 200, it's going to be 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, and so on. So I hope that demystifies how you would want to use this paper. Okay? And again, the reason you would want to use this is it would help you to straighten out some curves more easily, and this way you can more easily make predictions from straight lines on your graphs. I hope this has been helpful. We'll see you in the next video.